Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. A little while ago I did a video on my NAD C510 DAC and that got me thinking about where it is that I want to go with my DAC, what it is I want to do to Im improve my system. And so I started doing some research into that and I saw a few things come through on my YouTube feed of people talking about um, Denifrips DACs. Uh, the Denifrips Aries and the Denifrips Pontus, and I think that they really look fantastic. Uh, there are two R DACs, and yeah, I'm thinking that when the time comes to upgrade my DAC, I'd probably like to go down that path. But in the process of researching that DAC, I also came across another product, and that was the Denifrips Iris. And it is a digital to digital converter. And I thought that that idea looked very, very fascinating because I hadn't really thought about that too much. But basically what it comes down to is when we look at my source, this has been my source. This is my late 2011 MacBook Pro. It's running uh, Mac OS High Sierra, which is the last supported operating system um, by Apple for this particular model of Mac. And I'm just running my music to my DAC through iTunes. Now, there's a few problems with this. I guess the most obvious problem is, is that a computer is not intended to be an audiophile hi-fi device. Even though they perform, they can perform quite well, they are an inherently noisy device. And also the normal way to connect from a computer to a DAC is via USB. USB as an interface is also particularly noisy. So you've got a few problems. And this is where I'd ended up with an evolution of, of digital music. I mean, my digital music started out with CDs. And I think I went down the iTunes path when I got my first um, Apple TV way back in 2008. And so that's when I started playing with, with iTunes on, on a Mac. And yeah, my digital library just kind of like evolved from that point. But... As I'm sure you well know, there's, there's various problems with iTunes uh, and so on, other options out there. So where am I going with all of this? This line of research made me think that I could do better and that there were options out there that I was actually not really aware of. So, so dealing with the problems that are inherent to this MacBook Pro setup, but also coming up with a far better source. Because, you know, you think about it, your system can only ever be as good as your source. If your source in the digital world is giving you a jittery signal or an imperfect digital signal, then that's going to affect everything. So you want your signal to be as good as you possibly can. So that's what the Denifrips Iris does, is it's meant to sit between a digital source and a DAC and it cleans up the signal. That's one way of doing it. There's other ways of doing it, which we'll come to in a minute. So anyway, long story short, what I decided to do is that iTunes is gone. One of the other reasons why iTunes is, is a problem is because the way that Mac OS works is it, it fiddles around with the digital signal. So whatever you set your output bit rate to in system preferences, that's the bit rate that it will send it out as to the DAC. So there is a workaround. You can get this piece of software called BitPerfect. And with BitPerfect, it will change the bit rate to the native bit rate of the actual file but bit perfect it works with um, iTunes but it won't work with other things like, like I have Amazon music on here for example it won't work with Amazon music so th there's problems with there's all sorts of data integrity problems shall we say which is just really bad when you're trying to come up with a, a high-end hi-fi system so this had run its course uh, I'm basically done with iTunes so what do I do with this laptop. Well, I'm going to show you what I've done with this laptop. 
just by rebooting it. So as you can see, I have now dual booted this MacBook Pro. It has Debian installed on it. And um, this MacBook, I upgraded it some years ago. It's got a 500 gig SSD in it and it has got 16 gig of memory. So even though it's late 2011, it's a reasonably capable machine. So I've got Debian installed on it and I've got OpenMedia Vault, which is a, a Linux based, obviously, network attached storage. So I repetitioned the drive to give me a 300 gig network attached storage. Now it's gonna whinge because it hasn't got its ethernet cable plugged in. Um, this video, by the way, is not meant to be overly technical about linux -y kinds of things. There's plenty of other videos around there. What I just wanna show you right now is that this is how I've repurposed this MacBook Pro, that it's now a 300 gig network attached storage. So I can see this device just as a network drive anywhere on my network. And I can just dump all of my media files on there, which I have. So all my music is on there. I just copied all the files over from iTunes. I'll continue using iTunes on my main laptop, um, probably for purchasing albums and so on when I do. And then I just got to copy the files over to the network attached storage. Um, so I now have all of my music on this disk available on my network. Okay, that's fine. So where does my source come from now for my music? And it comes from here. So this is my new digital source. Now this is actually a streamer. Now a week ago I didn't really have any idea what a streamer was. Um, I hadn't considered it. I couldn't see how a streamer did anything for me. But long story short, what this does for me is it provides the interface between my music library, which as you saw is on the network attached storage, and my DAC. And that is all that it does. So I don't need the Denifrips Iris because I've now got rid of the laptop as a source. This is now the source. And not only that, is that this has a dedicated professional digital music output board. So this is actually a Pi Raspberry computer board. Um, it's the Pi 4B, which is the highest spec one that you can get at the moment. This is the 4 gig memory model. And it was 150 bucks Australian. And then on top of it, this is the Pi 2 AES 2.0. So this thing is literally hot off the press from the factory. These things have only been available for a month or so. Now where I got the idea for this is from another YouTube video, someone who was using a Pi 2 AES. Pi 2 AES is no longer available. All sorts of problems with chip availability um, in terms of getting things. Um, there's shortages also in getting hold of the Raspberry boards. But the Pi 2 AES 2.0 replaces the Pi 2 AES. And one of the reasons why people love this is that it has got um, I2S output. So if you've got a DAC that has got an I2S input, like some of the Denifrips ones do, I think they all do except for the very base model, you can do a I2S into your DAC, which is the best way to get the absolute best signal. But nonetheless, even the other signals that come out of this will be very, very good. It's got, it's got SPDIF um, and it's also got AES. So I'm using AES into my DAC. So my DAC doesn't have an I2S input, but it's got AES um, over balanced cable. So there's the balanced cable there. And so that's, that's going to give me the best signal that I can possibly get. And then if I do upgrade to a uh, Denifrips DAC, I'll be able to connect via I2S. So the, um, the Pi 2 AES 2.0, they're $299 US, um, plus I needed to get freight 
to here in Australia, it came in about, I think I ordered it on Friday and today's Thursday, it turned up today. So that's, that's pretty good, um, really fantastic freight. And as I say, this is, this is a brand new board. So I don't want this video to be about um, high raspberries and all that kind of stuff. This is more so about high-end hi-fi and how you really should consider getting one of these boards or something like this if you're thinking about your digital sources. Because again, as I said, this is something that I had not thought about at all until I kind of like did the research. And the figures show that the, the digital signal that comes out of this thing is actually better than what you will get out of a Denifrips iris after it has cleaned up the signal. So, so you get the best possible digital signal that you can get out. Um, even though, yes, is a, this is a single board computer, but it's far less noisy than something like a laptop. So I'm not using Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is, is turned off and it's just connected via Ethernet through um, a, a travel router that connects to my home Wi-Fi network. Um, the AES connection through the balance cable, as I said, you can plug in a separate 5 volt power supply. I am going to get a, a super duper low noise 5 volt power supply to power the, the top board. I don't have that yet, but it's just a jumper on the board to um, change that over and then plug the 5 volt supply into the um, the connector. So I think it'll be about $100 for that low noise 5 volts of supply. That will give me the absolute best, cleanest sort of um, power that I can get to the board. So the point is, this is a way of getting a digital source that is far better than something like, you know, this, this laptop. And it's a way of upgrading your DAC without upgrading your DAC. I think that is just absolutely amazing. And also um, that I got the, the network attached storage. So the NAS literally cost me nothing because I already had the laptop and Open Media Vault is free. And um, then this, this media streamer based around the Pi Raspberry 4B and the Pi 2 AES 2.0 um, well, I haven't done the mathematics as to how much this cost me. It was probably, I don't know, six or seven hundred bucks or something. But you can buy um, out of the box streamers that you don't have to build up yourself. That basically the hardware is more or less the same as this. So there's various people that um, sell them. So um, Pi2, I'm going to make sure I got the company's name right. What are they called? Pi2 Design. So, so Pi2 Design, they have an out-of-the-box streamer that you can buy. And I think it's about a thousand bucks. I can't remember whether that's Aussie or US. So it's a little bit more than this was, but it's, it's an out-of-the-box, ready-to-go um, system. Um, Volumio, I think, makes some... I'm running Volumio on this, by the way, is the software. It's, I've only got it up and running yesterday. And today I got it connected to, to Tidal. I've never used Tidal in my life. Um, it's just incredible. You, you connect to it through a browser and it just finds, you tell it where your network attached storage is, it just finds all your media, it, it just it knows what all your albums are, it, it handles all, all your album artwork, the works. It, it's just incredible. So, um, yeah, this, this really has been an upgrading of my DAC without upgrading my DAC. Absolutely fantastic. I hope this video gives you an idea of what the art of the possible is. If this has been helpful to you, you might like to consider supporting my channels on Patreon, or you could send me a super thanks. I'll put some links in the description to the other videos that inspired me. This isn't a how-to video. There's plenty of other videos around that will give you the how-to kind of stuff. I just wanted to focus on you know, how this can really help your hi-fi system if, like me, you're interested in good quality audio. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. I love to read your comments. And I really look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.